Cole Pellini's Kevin Green with me here this afternoon. Uh, Nicole, I think safe to say Palo Alto was our uh, big highlight here, but there's some pretty interesting stories. Chesapeake after taking Southwestern into a deal earlier this year. Um, even Caesars is kind of the big laggard in the gaming world right now. Should be an interesting uh, 30 minutes for us. I think they're all exciting. I couldn't agree more. Um, when you look at Palo Alto, there's been some solid field checks when it comes to how cybersecurity is doing cloud deals that could bode well for Palo Alto for Caesars. Um, you know, we did get that CPI print, which put a little weight on hotels and restaurants and things like that. But MGM recently has been doing well, um, noting some good news in Vegas and Macau. And with Chesapeake, I was just looking at some of the falling prices for Nat Gas. I was wondering how that's going to fit in yeah. there. And the National Weather Service, right, um, noting that it will be warmer in the U.S. In fact, Nat Gas has fallen about 40 percent in the past three it's months. Incredible. But um, I'm waiting to see what, yeah, exactly. Exactly. In Chesapeake, it looks like it's breaking now, Oliver. Yeah, we got the report hitting first. We'll go there first. Earnings beat the estimate, dollar thirty-one versus seventy-three cents. That's for the trailing fourth quarter, and uh, that's the adjusted number. Uh, this is going to be pretty impressive uh, if they manage to beat expectations, as Nicole just pointed out, an absolute bloodbath in natural gas prices. Uh, and also uh, the Southwestern deal, trying to get costs ready for that and associated with the merger. Uh, the adjusted uh, analyst estimate was for about 71 cents, according to Bloomberg, so maybe even a bigger beat uh, than I first mentioned. Uh, to me, that seems kind of impressive, KG, that uh, with everything happening in one of their main products here, that uh, they're still able to really beat the expectations pretty soundly. Yeah, definitely. And also, we have to just keep in mind with these energy companies, they are trading on spot prices. So sometimes we do see a disconnect like we are right now with the futures price of natural gas and what they're actually doing uh, within their own business and who they're selling to. So that is also going to be a little bit of a benefit for them. Obviously, getting that update on the acquisition is going to be a key area, but their guidance moving forward here, um, especially when you're looking at the capital expenditures, they're actually reducing that guidance by about 20%. So that's also another tailwind for the stock after hours. So we know that prices are coming down, the spreads are getting lower and lower. So they're going to pull back on the CapEx. They're going to pull back on the expansion strategy for now and maybe utilize that capital in other ways, maybe buybacks, maybe a dividend, maybe just keeping the cash in on reserve until something uh, that is attractive really does show up. So I think they're doing a, a really good job with trying to be able to manage uh, their business. And actually, they've been kind of reducing the amount of uh, wells that they have uh, you know, operating at this point in time, too. So they're trying to right size the business as much as possible because of this weak winter season that we had in natural gas okay uh yeah this uh i mean it's i think i don't want to jinx it but last i looked at my phone it's like 55 in chicago so i mean that's pretty compelling stuff uh to uh but negative for chesapeake of course nicole Right. I mean, obviously, and that was part of it was that I was talking with the National Weather Service noting a warmer February, and that's uh, not what they're hoping for. Right. Um, that being said, I think it was interesting that you brought up all the deals that have been happening in the Chesapeake agreeing to buy Southwestern Energy. And so this making the behemoth. And so the question is whether or not there are more deals to come, how this fits in overall um, into the big picture for the company. We've seen so many deals of late, but nice to see this beat overall um, and we're seeing some of the capex but i mean just to, just to go over them diamondback agrees to buy endeavor exxon buys pioneer chevron buying hess occidental bought crown rock last year um, so you know the question is whether or not there'll be more deals to come in this group um, maybe some smaller ones in the permian basin so we Good are point. seeing some of the um, numbers here uh, lowering the capital expenditure by 20% wow. um, full year 24 uh, by 20% 1.25 billion to 1.35 billion so the question is um, when I see that I start to say um, you know is it less capex spending because they can't spend or are they cutting costs and being more conservative and is that a good thing um you know i i get torn on how to interpret that 
No, it's a good point. Um, for a lot of these energy companies, markets have been pretty happy to see them lower costs, of course, over the past decade. Lately, with uh, the amount of uh, booming supply, it seems like generally getting access to more land and drilling has been welcomed. Um, what do you think, KG? I mean, when you've got a deal happening as well, though, I mean, that kind of serves the purpose also of what you might be doing in CapEx, too. When you're going to bring in another producer into your fold, I mean, you may not, that's kind of one of the options, right, of how to expand. Yeah, definitely. And they'll probably sell off some of those assets as well as they find in, uh, synergies within their, their business here. I mean, we're in a different dynamic than what we were in five years ago or even 10 years ago. These energy companies, they don't have to expand uh, as much as they had to in the past. They just need to be able to maintain margins. And in order to do so, you have to constrain supply or right size your business. I think that's really what they're doing. I would not be surprised about the fact that they're cutting their capex spend. If, in fact, if you look at a lot of these energy companies, they're doing the same thing or they're re-diverting that capex spend into other projects, if you will, maybe not going into fossil fuels, but maybe utilizing uh, more on the renewable side of the business or even carbon capture, which is becoming a very big industry here. So I think they're they're making the right moves. The stock has not seen a lot of action, obviously, because of the natural gas. They're going to have to talk about that spread in the call, but I think they're doing the right things right now when it comes to their business. No reason to expand if you don't have uh, the, the price action, uh, if you will, when it comes to natural gas, be able to give you the margins you need. Okay, uh, good stuff, very well said. Uh, you have some good stats for us there. Let's talk some Palo Alto. Uh, Nicole, Wait, do you want to just quickly hear about the expenditure? Oh yeah, go ahead, yeah, please. Just mm -hmm. quickly, that capital expenditure, um, that guidance that we said about 20%, approximately um, less, is through rig count reductions and deferring completions and turn in lines. They also announced Southwestern Energy merger targeted to close in the second quarter. Okay. All right. Uh, interesting. So that deal is going to be a go. And uh, we'll watch Occidental, too, because Oxy's uh, talking about making a sale as well. So there's some interesting stuff across the whole spectrum right now. These companies kind of combining. As far as the tech spectrum goes, looking a little red here in the aftermarket. Palo Alto's down about 14 percent. Not seeing an obvious reason why at first. Sales came in just shy of $2 billion, which is exactly what the market was looking for. Earnings a buck forty six. Uh, does look like it's uh, ahead of the expectations uh, by I don't know fifteen cents, like buck forty six versus buck thirty. Doesn't seem terrible. KG, well, you see anything in the report? No, uh, still kind of going through it. I think the, the billings number is really what is going to be the focus here. They see fiscal year total billings in the range of 10.10 .10 billion to 10.2 billion. We'll have to see what the analysts have for that because uh, that growth rate does not look like it matches what I saw earlier this warning from an analyst expert expectation. But once again, sometimes they're not going to be comparable. So I would say the billings is going to be the main focus here. And we're also not going to have the remaining performance obligations probably until a call or at least when their PowerPoint deck comes out. This is the same exact situation that we saw the last earnings announcement. You hit the you get the flash numbers and then they start to leak out, if you will, and they start to release some of the underlying data. And that actually did reaffirm the stock to back to the upside here. Uh, so right now, Looking at the glance of it, you know, coming up short on sales potentially, depending on the, the estimate. Yeah, that could be the case here. Uh, beating on the bottom line, I think is a good thing. I think it's going to be billings, and I'll try to get that number as far as uh, the comp. Okay. I mean, look, uh, when you're up as much as they are, 80% in the last year, even more off the lows. It went from 200 to 366 off the lows, Nicole. I mean, I think, you know, we should be expecting a very high bar here. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I think maybe also their outlook, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like they could have done better That's there. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem because you did have a beat uh, on the top and bottom line, but it's the problem here with the outlook here for the third quarter um, adjusted numbers here. You do see earnings per share 124 to 126, the estimate 129. Um, and when it comes to total revenue, that also comes in light. 1.95 billion, 1.98 billion, the estimate 2.04 billion. So not even close right i mean yeah. i just love to see that maybe somewhere in the range not even touching um that range so that is problematic so a lot of this guidance here every single part of it and then you have the full year coming in here and uh looks like that too is coming in relatively light yeah that one that's yeah that well, one's the one that stands right? out to me 
No, for sure, yeah. 551. Yep. Mm, well, you know, uh, the 551 looks like it may be in the middle, but I can't, I can't, I'm not finished with the full year, but I will say some of this outlook looks weak. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, uh, uh, you know, I feel like probably have to beat at this point. I mean, we've got standards in this market now, KG. Big rallies. <laughs> I don't think you can just meet. Yeah, definitely. And actually, uh, Nicole, for the the revenue, they guided between 7.95 and 8 billion um, for fiscal year 24. The street was looking for 8.2 billion. So they did miss there. And then total billings actually did come up a little bit short, Oliver. Uh, came up around, let's say, $50 million short, give or take, depending on the estimate. That's not what you want to see. Now, you can miss on the top line, and you can miss when, it looks, when you look at the uh, revenue projections, but the billings is really showing you the demand that's in the market. And it does seem like it is softening we talked about that elongation of the sales cycle it appears like that is actually showing up on their forward guidance here and that's not a good look so yeah we are seeing a little bit of a pullback once again though the remaining performance obligations once they release that number that might readjust the market's expectations but top line uh billings number does not look good uh, does not look good either so that's another reason why we're seeing the sell-off so you think there was kind of a communication mismatch on the mix of their customer base as far as what the market was looking for i know you talked about with uh uh, that with us this morning. No, I, I think what's actually happening is, you know, they might have smaller customers or customers that are part of mid-sized businesses, and they might have an 18-month uh, uh, strategic plan for spending when it comes to uh, onboarding for cybersecurity products, networking products, hardware, things of that nature. And then those companies might say, you know what, we were going to do this in 18 months, or maybe we're going to do it in 12 months, but now we're going to have to do this over a, uh, a 24-month time frame, right? So you're still going to spend that money, but you're not going to be able to realize that revenue uh, as quickly. And a lot of companies do that because of the, the nature of spend uh, right now for enterprise spending. I don't sure. think it's the top tier clients. I think it's really the low tier, uh, you know, small cap, mid cap companies that are probably coming up short right now. All right. Uh, well argued. Uh, Mark Dow just tweeted out uh, Palo Bajo, the air you, uh, that sound you hear is air coming out of the market's tires. I mean, it, it feels like a good way to describe it here, Nicole. Yeah, look, it's a disappointment. And, you know, the company talked about growing across all their platforms. Um, they said growing cross-platform adoption. They're in a unique position. Um, they talked about profitable growth. Even um, looking at AI leadership strategies, but noting some consolidation strategies. So um, they certainly are trying to give the outlook in a positive way. I mean, Dan Ives has said it's the golden age of cybersecurity and and um, had a 425 target. RBC also put a 420 target, um, just talked about pure multiple expansion. So there were a lot of high bars set here, and maybe that was part of the issue. A lot of the other earnings that have come in have had lowered estimates. You know, maybe this one was just um, a little too hard to reach. Yeah, yeah, a little too, uh, a little too uh, high of a bar. Uh, so maybe a little preview into what we're gonna be dealing with as we move into kind of the software side of this market, which. Uh, has not shown so far the same degree of earnings uplift that semiconductors have. Because that's the thing about those earnings is that they all were negative on the trailing basis, but almost all of the beats were crushed in the outlook. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit harder to come by, I think, for software. A quick look at Caesars real fast is a laggard in its category. It's still losing money. Uh, loss per share of $0.34. Cents. Loss of $72 million. Earning, uh, stock dipped and then came back. The earnings gap loss was much deeper than expected as well. So the uh, adjusted uh, came out uh, maybe a little closer to the estimate, but the gap was a pretty big loss. And uh, the top line didn't hit it either. Uh, I have to say, Nicole, I feel like Caesars is uh, lower ranking on our list. DraftKings, MGM, Penn, even though they've got some... Uh, issues right now with the whole bar stool situation. Penn and Caesars definitely are kind of on the lower uh, quality list of the online gaming plays right now. That seems to be the message. 
Yeah, I, you know, it's true. Caesars has not been the power player when it comes to online no. gaming. I mean, DraftKings certainly has been a leader. That's a name that a lot of our guests come on and pick as their winner. In fact, I was just reading that DraftKings did so well on the Super Bowl, $8 million versus um, a loss for BetMGM. They made $8 wow. million. MGM lost $5 million on Super Bowl bets in New York. Um, I think it's interesting, but uh, this miss here, um, it's not looking good for Caesars Entertainment. You can see that the stock sold off. It looks like it's trying to recover as it's giving some more information now as we speak. But overall, you know, the question is, how much people want to be gambling and what the outlook is uh, from what i was reading and while there may be some uncertainty and people have a lot of debt and such um, it didn't look like there was going to be slowdown in gambling sure yeah that definitely is the case just uh, it's flowing up into other players right now too much physical attachment uh to the ground to the hotels to the real estate uh kevin for caesars better ways to play the online revolution yeah, they're just in a transition. I mean, their Las Vegas uh, revenue came in pr pretty weak, to say the least here. And even if you're looking at the regionals, it's pretty much flat on a year-over-year -year basis. And then they're spending a lot of money on their digital uh, footprint as well. So that's not going to be good when it comes to earnings. So uh, it's an unfortunate situation here. Starting to see it uh, you know, pull back here a little bit. But uh, you know, they do a lot of talking on the call, too. So they can turn the stock around after the co conference call, Oliver's. So I would not be surprised by that. Uh, but once again, seeing that slowing in Las Vegas is not something that you want to see. And we haven't really seen that in other, uh, you, know, you know, gambling stocks or you know, companies like that um, in this earnings season, at least that I've seen. Yeah, they, they're kind of the first one to show that uh, contraction in Las Vegas. True. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, laggard here, the category, and uh, you know, with our winner Palo Alto not really winning this afternoon. So far, it's a little bit of a rougher start to this week. Appreciate the help, Nicole Petalese and Kevin Green. Thanks, guys.